A little help with Java while loop worksheet number five. Num and sum are initialized to zero. I'll be sure to read the directions at all times. Okay, num not equal to negative one. Negative one is a sentinel value. Eventually the user inputs a negative one here. We all, we're all agreeing on that. But right now, num is not equal to negative one, so that is true. Zero is not equal to negative one. That's true, so we do go through the loop the first time. Okay, what does sum plus equals num do? Well, it takes whatever's in num, zero, and adds it into sum. Zero plus zero is zero. I cross that zero out and put a new zero down because that's just good, careful style. And now we get to this line of code where I'm just kind of using English here to explain. You're supposed to assume that the number three gets inputted into the variable num at this moment. So cross that zero out, make it a three. We hit the closing curly brace, we loop back up to the top. Is three not equal to negative one? True. So we go through the loop. Sum plus equals num. That takes this three and adds it into this zero to make this zero now a three. And we get to this line of code again, it's kind of interesting here. Uh, we already used up the three and now we are all agreeing that a two gets inputted into the variable num. So we kind of used up that two. Cross that three out, make it a two. We loop back up to the top and we go through the loop again. That two gets added into three for a grand total of five. We now pretend that a four gets plugged in for num. Okay, and I'm not going to finish the problem. I'm not going to finish this while loop and then tell you what prints out. You figure it out yourself. But do trust that eventually a negative one does get inputted into num, and at that moment, negative one, not equal to negative one, will evaluate to false. Negative one, not equal to negative one. That's false. And at that, at that point in the future, we will stop iterating this while loop, and we'll be finished with the problem. Number two, uh, a little bit of help here with number two. Interesting, we have a Boolean variable. It's equal to false. Okay, I, I note that. Um, this is five and this is zero. And now we hit this uh, nice succinct control expression. While not divisible by five. Well, divisible by five is false. And the not of a false, the not of a false is overall true. So we do go through the while loop. And we do num plus equals one. Cross that out, make it a six. We do iterations plus plus. Cross that out, make it a one. And now we hit the if statement. An if statement with no curly braces, but oh well. It's bad style, but I'll still uh, look at it. If num mod five double equals zero. Well, num is currently six. Six divided by five yields a remainder of one. And that one, we're checking to see if that one is equal to zero. Um, that is a false expression, so we do not execute the body of the if statement, not yet at least. We hit this curly brace, we loop back up to the top. This control expression is still overall true, so we go through the loop again. Num plus equals one. Eventually you should see a pattern here. Iterations plus plus turns that into two. And you know what, what we're really doing here? We're asking if num is evenly divisible by five, because that's what this snazzy um, expression here does. When you mod by five and check to see if that's equal to zero, you're checking to see if there's no remainder when dividing by five. In other words, you're checking to see if num is evenly divisible by five. Is seven evenly divisible by five? No. So this is false. We don't do this yet. We loop back up the top. We end up num plus plusing up to eight. Iterations goes up to three, and I think you can all see the pattern. Eventually num will be 10, and at that moment, 10 will be evenly divisible by five, and at that point, we will change this false to a true right here. And when that changes to a true, on that next go around to the top of the loop, what's the not of a true? False. And at that point, overall, thank goodness, we'll have a false and we'll be finished with this exercise. We will not go through the loop anymore. But you have to finish these dot, dot, dots. And then you have to tell me what system out prints down here uh, below. Okay, number three. This is a very, very uh, common thing to have to do in the AP exam, so pay attention. And uh, who knows, if you're an honor student and you end up being uh, working at Hulu, 
like one of my former honors Java students works at the company Hulu that uh, you know puts TV uh, shows on on a, on a subscription status kind of like Netflix does um, you might have to do something like this at Hulu as part of your job okay let's see here uh, num equals 123 okay that's that's pretty easy and reverse is 0 and this is true so we do this reverse times 10 okay uh, 0 times 10 is 0 hey uh, this according to order of operations well you go from left to right here well, no you don't go left to right you do the mod first before plus what is num mod 10 what's the remainder of 123 mod 10 you should always know that when you mod by 10 it ends up being the ones digit so this is really just a 3 okay if you don't understand that check it out 123 divided by 10 Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. I do all this long division, it's annoying. 2 times 10 is 20. Look what I got as a final remainder. 3. Huh, what a coincidence. It was the ones digit. It always works. We use this in computer programming all the time. We mod things by 10 so that we know what the ones digit is. Okay, what do we do with that ones digit? Uh, well, we add it to reverse. 3 plus reverse. 3 plus 0. Well, that's a 3, and we put that 3 into the variable reverse, crossing that 0 out. It's now a 3. Gee whiz. Now, the trickiest line of code here. Num equals num divided by 10. Num is currently 123. And 123 divided by 10, to a math teacher, that is 12.3. You know, you move the decimal one place in from the right. But not so easy in Java. Because num is an int, and because 10 is a whole number, an int. When you have an int divided by another int, it's called integer division, and it chops off decimal places, leaving just a 12 there, and that 12 then gets plugged into num as the final result here of this right-hand side. So cross this 123 out and make it a 12, because that's what just happened. And even if this ended up being 12.9, even if that was a 9, 12.9, we would still chop off the 0.9. It's called truncating the decimal places. Okay, well, this causes us to loop back up to the top of the while loop, because we were at the bottom then, and uh, we do it all again. Reverse times 10. Ooh, this is interesting. Reverse is now 30. And we do the mod by 10. Um, let's see, 12 mod by 10, you're really just taking this 1's digit, 2. That 2 is being added to reverse. Uh, okay, 30 plus 2. 32, that's, I can do that in my head. And that 32 is being plugged back into reverse, which I already did right there. Then we do num divided by 10 again. Oh, yuck. 12 divided by 10. Well, it's really 1.2. I know in the world of math, but we chop off the 0.2. And that 1 is what gets plugged into num. So num overwrites itself with a 1. Okay, I'm, I'm, uh, eventually, we end up taking 1 and dividing it by 10. In other words, we eventually get a 0 0.1 here. We chop off the 1, and a 0 ends up being plugged into for num. And then when we loop up around, is 0 greater than 0? False. And we do end. The question mark is, what is reversed at the time when this algorithm ends, and therefore what prints out? You finish it out. It's a mystery. Number three is just like, okay, this is really a number four, so please pretend this is number four. This is just like number three, only I started with a different number. And don't just write the answer if you see the pattern. I want to see the exact tracing of each involved variable. Ooh, I used REV instead of reverse. Okay, that doesn't really change anything. It's still the same mathematical logic here as it was up here, if you look closely. Good luck with that.